Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So one thing I've learned from working out in the gym a lot, from having a lifestyle of physical fitness, is that we achieve goals through consistency and intensity. Mainly consistency. That's the key towards achieving your goals. Now, you have to have a certain level of intensity in whatever you're doing or else it may take you a lifetime or two lifetimes to actually achieve your goal. If you're not really moving fast enough, but you're consistent with it, I mean, that's good for you that you're doing something, but it may not be enough. You really have to push yourself. You have to get beyond your comfort zone. You have to push yourself into a, 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 a position of struggle. And that can be anxiety inducing. It could be it could be hard, but you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to go through the struggle. And you have to be consistent with that. You struggle every day, you'll get somewhere. You fight every day, you'll finally start winning. You work out every single day. You put yourself on a regular program that involves a certain level of intensity and consistency and you will see results. You'll start losing weight if that's your goal. You'll start building muscle mass if that's your goal. How we do anything is how we do everything. Working out and being physically fit, having that as a lifestyle, mind, body, and soul has taught me a lot about just how to achieve goals in general. Sticking with the physical fitness analogy, I was doing some brush clearing last week around the house, just on the property. I have a section back there that was rather overgrown, and this is Florida, so if you've ever seen the Florida jungle, that's what it was like in that one little section back there. It was like a 10, strip, a 10 foot wide by 20 foot long strip of just brush. So we cleared it out down to the ground, completely clear. It looks great now. I had a couple friends come by and help me. One of my buddies that helped me He's a pretty short guy, five foot five, shorter, and 400 pounds easily, if not more. You know, I'm not trying to dog him, but he's in awful physical shape, and he was happy to get the, just to get out and just to get some movement. It was hard work. We worked for a couple hours. We're all sweating. We ended up with a big giant pile that I put out in the front, which the city came by and got, but it was a big pile of brush and looking at it we were kind of proud of ourselves like wow that's a lot of work at the end of those two hours we're all sitting by the pool back here just kind of relaxing having some drinks and cooling off we're all sweating and my my buddy who's overweight complained that he could do all that work and still not lose a single pound and, you know, at first I thought he was just joking, but then I realized as he said it again, and he made the same type of comment twice, that he was actually serious, that he was frustrated with that, that not with the work, but with the fact that he's so fat, that the fat is stuck on him, that he can't lose the fat. He wants to. He would like to be in better shape, but he just doesn't know how. And he can look at an experience like that we had where we're working out and say, well, see, I tried and get on the scale later that day or the next day and say, I didn't lose a single pound. I tried. Look how hard I worked. I sweat my ass off. I was ready to die. I was working out so hard and I didn't lose a single fucking pound. And to use that as an excuse, as justification to just give up of why he's stuck being fat. Why he's stuck not achieving his goal. My goal is too unattainable. I tried and I can't do it. I told him, I had to just t tell him, look, you can't just work out for two hours and sweat your ass off and expect to start losing weight. You have to do that level of an intensity on a consistent basis. You're going to have to do what you just did. And that was uncomfortable and that sucked. And you, you know, I see how much you're sweating and how winded you are. You're going to have to do that every day. Do that every day for a year, along with start eating right. Stop eating plates of 50 chicken wings. Cut down the, the amount of food that you're eating. Put yourself into a calorie deficit and start sweating off that fat. And, and do it with a, a, 
a level of intensity and consistency that way you'll, fi that way you'll finally see results. But it's going to take time. It can't just be once. I mean, that's ridiculous. A good example of somebody who really took this serious, and I wish I could remember his name, but it's an actor that you may have seen. You know, the movie that I liked him in, he's been in a few, but what I really liked him in was he played the fat skinhead in that movie American History X. You know, the Nazi guy. And Ed Norton, uh, I think Ed Norton might have even got an Oscar for that movie. It was a great movie. And he plays his fat friend. Ethan, or whatever the guy's name is, plays the, you know, you know what I'm talking about? That guy. He lost, go, go Google that motherfucker. He lost a ton of weight. I saw a before and after picture just on Facebook the other day. I had to share it on my page. The before picture is him as a big fat tub of lard. It's just reality. Massively, massively overweight. And the after picture is this m muscular, ripped guy. He did it. He's, it didn't, and it didn't happen overnight. This guy had to work his ass off. It was painful. It sucked. But that's how you do it. You know, another analogy, another example I can give you is, I dated this girl a while back, this was years ago. She was a cool chick, and I was living out in California, in the Central Coast, and she had graduated, I forget what university she went to, but she had graduated with a degree in animal biology. She wanted to work with the gorillas, with that gorilla. I don't even know if that gorilla is alive anymore, but I think it was called, his name was Coco. It was a real smart gorilla doing sign language and shit. And she wanted to go work with that gorilla. That was her dream. That's why she got the degree. And the degree wasn't easy. And she put a certain level of consistency and intensity into getting that degree, showing up to class every day, doing the homework, getting tutors if you need to, doing what it takes, coming up with the money, working two jobs, getting loans, whatever it takes to do that, to get the schooling. But when it came down to getting the job, she was just like my buddy. It was, I was almost heartbroken for her. When I met her, she was a secretary. She had completely given up on her career. She had this incredibly complex degree intellectual degree. She's a fucking scientist working as a secretary at some office. And I was just like, honey, you have this degree you work so hard for. Why did you give it up? And she told me the story and she sent, sent out a letter to the people that were working with Coco that handled that gorilla, that whatever university or facility was doing that. And she never heard anything back. So she gave up, figured they don't want her. And just went and got a job as a secretary. And I was just like, what? That's what you did? Did you learn nothing from your school? It wasn't easy getting the, the degree. Why did you think it was going to be easy getting the job? And then why did you give up? There's other gorillas. You could have applied to that same job more than once. You could have followed up on your fucking letter. There's so many different things that you could do on a consistent basis to get that job or to get a job like it. I could go on and on with these types of examples. I wanted to be in radio. That was kind of a little fantasy of mine. Be a, a disc jockey. You know, people don't really listen to radio anymore, but uh, radio used to be a big deal when I was young. I wanted to be like Howard Stern or one of these types of people and be on air, run my mouth. So I went and took a broadcasting class up at the uh, university, and it was okay. You know, they teach you a few things. Took it for a semester, and they had a board. They have a whole broadcasting department at the college I went to, and on the board they had a, a job listings. I saw a job listing for K Rock in Los Angeles, K R O Q, big radio station, rock and roll radio station. I went up to get the job, and. I dressed in a suit like you're supposed to go for job interviews and dress all nice. Funny thing was, is when I got the, for the interview, I went through the interview and the chick who is the head of the um, music department, she told me straight out and she's just like, look, you seem like a nice guy. You seem like you have a lot of character, but you're just not right for this company. I mean, look how I'm dressed. Look how everybody else in the hallway is dressed. We're all just kind of jeans and t-shirts. 
She's telling me her boss is wearing cut off shorts and a Beatles shirt with holes in it. And here I am with a suit and a goddamn briefcase. She's just like, you don't fit in. You seem too uptight. I was shocked. I was just like, man, I didn't know. I'm just like you guys, but I normally dress up for job interviews. I thought this, you know, I just thought that that's how you're supposed to go to job interviews. I didn't know. I didn't do any research on the culture of the company that I was trying to apply to so I could fit in, so I could impress them. You get one shot with most job interviews, uh, and I blew it. I walked away dejected without the job. They, they turned me away. They didn't think I was cool enough. <laughs> and I gave up on my dreams of being on the radio. I never went for another interview to another place again. I dropped the class and was done with it. And said, hey, I tried. That's not how you achieve goals. You want to get something in your life, you don't give up. If you fuck up on your first try, so what? It's just your first try. Try a thousand times. There's authors out there that you may be aware of that are famous authors that have written some of the biggest classics that have ever uh, existed, Lord of the Rings and these types of books, they have been rejected so many times. Stephen King and these types of people, they, they put out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, query letters to try to get a publisher or a, uh, an a, or a literary agent to, to handle them, to help them get a deal. And rejection, 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 go through 400 rejections and finally that one. And that becomes one of the most famous books you've ever read that may have taken 12 years. A book that took a year to write, took 12 years to get published with nothing but tears and in between and struggle. But it just depends on how bad you want it. You have to be consistent with your struggle. You have to have intensity. It's just food for thought. Don't let one failure set you back. Don't let the progress that might not be visible to you, even if it's just a little step you took today and you don't even notice any difference in your life. I worked so hard today and it didn't get me anywhere. Do that shit again tomorrow and do it again the next fucking day and the next fucking day. I could have been on radio. I gave up like a pussy. Thanks for watching.